Hello, Rim to the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize, and the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 277. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Well, sweetheart, we are sitting here in some cool weather this morning, so I'm it. thinking <laughs> I'm thinking some hot apple cider. <laughs> I'm thinking pumpkin spice. Oh, is that what you got? I, know I got you pumpkin stopped, spice got you. <laughs> in my coffee this morning. <laughs> I knew something was smelling good. There were, there were a couple of guys sitting there taking a sip, almost speaking in tongues this morning oh. there at Casey's. It was <laughs> awesome. But uh, I, I love the fall. Uh, I love, and I'm praying that we've, you know, we've had rain this last week, and maybe we'll actually see some colors uh, in the in the fall foliage. I'm this starting year. to see a little bit in there. It's just if we get some rain, I think it helps that the colors. Yeah, there there are some in the area that are just that real bright red. They're almost breathtaking when you mm-hmm. when you drive by. I always look forward to those every year. A couple of things going on. Uh, one, and this is on the construction that we're doing over uh, in the new building. Uh, the new flooring, they put almost 5,000 square feet of new flooring, and it's a uh, plank vinyl that kind of looks like wood flooring. And, man, it really turned out nice, didn't it, Mary? It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And so they're, they've got that done. Uh, next week they're going to be painting some of the rooms and doing some painting in the in the fellowship hall. Uh, as well as this week they're going to uh, – the kind of has that old-style tiling in the in the fellowship hall. And some of the tiling was damaged and stuff, so we have the the same flooring company coming back to uh, replace some of the tiles. Luckily, we found a box and a half of uh, of the old tiles yeah, up in the gonna attic. Match. It's going to And work. so they're gonna they're <laughs> gonna put that in. And once they get that done, then we're going to start kind of populating some of the office space there and getting it up and running. Uh, and looking forward to where hopefully in February, uh, the construction company will be able to start the major remodel in in the sanctuary section. Uh, they've got, I mean, it's, they've got to frame the whole thing in and the kitchen and, and everything there, as well as in the gym. Uh, you know, it's the old steel beams because when you look at the building, it's basically the way they did it. It's, it's two steel buildings with this gap in between, and they built walls around it made it into the gym. And so one of the things we're going to do is have them put a uh, drop the ceiling down some, drop the lights down uh, in the gym as well when they do this other stuff. And uh, Mary, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. Yeah, it's you can see now what what God's doing, and yeah, I've, it's I've just it's of, very exciting. I've kind of need to sketch out how I want everything to give it to the contractors because I, I just can't say, well, I want you the wall over here. I've got to kind of uh, sketch some things out for them, but I, I'm I'm really getting excited. And uh, there's there's been a lot going on if you if you've been paying attention uh, to the news to the uh, consternation of uh, the, the the ultra-liberal left. Uh, if you remember here not too long ago, they were they made up this story of something. Somebody said, somebody said, the president said about the, the fallen soldiers over in France when he was visiting over there. And anybody who knows President Trump knows that he wouldn't say anything like that. Well, now it's come out and on video of Biden uh, calling them stupid and a B-word talking about our troops and this one is not somebody said somebody said somebody said but they actually have it on video with one of his speeches and one of the things that we're seeing and it's absolutely frustrating uh the marxist movement in america is they will try this disinformation act and it will come back on them and find out they're the ones that actually are saying things like this or doing certain things Mm -hmm. and uh, even here locally mary i think there's been just a lot of things beginning to be that were hidden they're beginning to be revealed oh absolutely i wanted to talk about that just a a little bit and just a warning for you you won't want your kids to to hear this so if you've got your children listening then i'm going to take just a minute and thank everybody for their support of us thank you so much for praying for us oh we need it Uh, oh my goodness it we're just you can tell when when god's people are praying and and it's just been an absolute pleasure for us and a privilege to have the partners that we do because they're so supportive. And, um, and we just we couldn't have asked God for a better group of people than those that encourage us. Sometimes there are little notes that they do and everything just it's really just, makes your day. They're just so wonderful, and we, we appreciate that so much. Um, 
Okay, so now you've probably had time to make sure no no little ones sitting there listening. Uh, one of the things that you know we've we've said this is a year of exposure, and so I wanted to talk to you about something that is local that I've been praying about for so long. You know, I've talked about the Amish community a lot because I I absolutely know <laughs> because of something uh, that I saw. Some di- I mean, just probably about. Well, look at all Russ, twenty different things. Well, look at all that Rush Dizdar has done with the uh, with the Amish up in mm-hmm. Pennsylvania and revealing the the horrific things up there. Well, and we had uh, an Amish community in the town I was raised, and if you if you watch where there are centers of mind control and there's all kinds of witchcrafts and stuff like that, a lot of times, guess what? You see an Amish community and spiritual and, stagnation. Too. And you know they're kind of they're kind of separated from the law and everything. I mean, they just got their own rules and things, and so. Recently, we had a situation where there were um, Amish brothers that had raped a young relative. And I've heard different people say that's their sister. But I, in most of the, of the news things that I was able to pull up, they just say it was a relative. There were two that were of age that pled guilty to two counts of third-degree child molestation. And then there were uh, two other underage relatives and all four were supposed to have have raped this girl the reason that this came out was because she went to the doctor and she was pregnant um and so this to to me this is uh probably one of the the first times i've ever seen anything really talked about because this they uh when their the charges came they um they essentially were on probation they didn't get like jail time is what happened, and so it it raised up a lot of of people talking about this. It was it's a major story, um, and so I have I have thought forever that this kind of stuff's going on all the time. It's why when we can, we we drive straight through it, we dr- we can drive straight through it coming to Seymour. Then we've got another section of it that's over there by Diggins, and so as I was looking through. Um, the news articles, one popped up from 2013. And now this is was three miles northwest of Diggins, right over there. There's a reason God's got us here praying over all this area and stuff, because I've been so concerned about the youth that are in the Amish community, because I thought, now, God, I know there's mind control here. I know it. And so I'm asking you to reveal this so these kids can be brought to safety. And I think that's what stirred the community so much, is is what happened is they're, they're, I think they revoked their probation uh, because they had had contact with her, so they revoked, revoked it. Uh, but it just stirred people up because the Ozarks, there are a lot of people that have said for a long time that the Ozarks hide or abuse. Yeah. They, they don't, you know, deal with the, the abusers and the victims suffer, and I've heard that forever, and I witnessed that. Uh, now, not not to say that we don't have good people. I mean, I love our our Webster County Sheriff. I love the and I pray for them all the time because I know that there's targets. They're they're good, godly men. And I, I um, think they're frustrated at the the secrecy of some of these groups. Yeah, and so uh, what happened was in in 2013, uh, they were called to an Amish home, and there was a a young man. 23-year-old, who has the same last name as these other four that just molested this young girl. And they found him, and he had reportedly um, castrated himself. Now, they they looked around and, and couldn't find, you know, what he said to support exactly what he said had happened. And so there was a lot of speculation on did the did was that his punishment for something? Yeah. Because they, they have their own system of punishment. Yeah, it's Amish sovereignty. And so um but but I've known for such a long time. The reason I'm I'm bringing this horrible incident up um is this I think this is part of exposing the, the secrets, exposing what's going on. Um this this shouldn't be. I mean, this is this is some crazy kind of stuff. You know, one one of the things the sheriff said is he just couldn't believe somebody would be able to do that. Um, you know, leaving the 
the impression that was was this done. It, it said that he he declared he couldn't remember going out or coming back in. So, I mean, with when you've got mind control in a place, and and the Amish community is so perfect for this because they don't have birth certificates. They, there's no record keeping. There, there's nothing. I mean, it's just kind of like their own little thing, and they, you could hide anything in there. And that's why I've, I've seen so many things um, that I know. I know that this is involved in it. I've seen it, you know, these last 26 years. And so, so just to let you know, God's going to be exposing things on a major scale. And we've just got to keep praying because that's, that's the key. If you bind up, um, you know, the cloaking ability of witchcraft, if you, if you take authority over an area, these things will start to come to the surface. And so now this will be looked at now because of the, of the whole legal s- situation. And so it's, it's just part of many things that are going to be revealed. Um, and I'm, I pray that you guys had a, had a wonderful feast time, that you, um, you know, you were probably doing like us, Yesterday morning, you praying and <laughs> you know asking, praying for the nation. Um, we were making in, sure everything personally is under the blood of Jesus. Boy, you got that right, and asking God to help us. And He's He's so faithful, isn't He? Wonderful, He is. And just spending time with Him. And so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about about what God's been speaking to me as I've been seeking Him. And then Mike's gonna do a teaching. We got. <laughs> I've been trying to do this where like. I'll say what God wants me to say and kind of get out of the way so you can you can just talk and teach and whatever. And then we still gotta we still had somebody complain that Mary needs to shut up and let him teach. That's it. You, know, you do the, teach. We you got a whole series of teachers, and I yeah, I just need to be able to. That's the purpose of Biblical Life TV. <laughs> this this is our show together. And on the comments, Mary, uh, people have told you to shut up. They've told me to shut up, and so we end up with. Dead air. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to shut up as long as I believe I'm hearing something that no. God wants me to speak to help people. This this is our show together, and we we spend a lot of time in prayer. And you know, sometimes I think this people need to keep some of their opinions to themselves because what you do <laughs> well, is you you hit their flesh and they get mad, and so they've got to ride a little dig. Yeah, but you know what? I I look that as at that as a confirmation that. Okay, something still want me to shut up, just like yeah. when I was a little girl. Well, I'm not going to shut up as long as I believe I'm saying something that's pertinent. You know, there's a lot of times yeah. your teaching is is significant. I just want to just maybe do some uh huhs and stuff so I don't interrupt. But, but I mean, I I you know at the same time what I look at is they're not remnant because remnant does not have that heart, and no, so that's no. not even that's not even who. Oh we're my with goodness, anyway. I it's it's so overridden by all the wonderful things that that people have said and encouraged us. And I'm not going to stop talking because I, I'm going to do what God tells me to do. Yeah. And so here we go. You go girl. Come on. (laughs) But anyway, uh, you know, everybody knows we're in a battle for the nation right now. I mean, this, it's never been clear, never been clear that the, the, the good foundation of our nation, the foundation that is, is meant by God, you know, I've, there's always been two destinies in America. Yeah, and and there and I I I kind of try to stay away from destiny anymore because I think, boy, that's used a lot. But our two purposes: what, the plan, plan yeah. and purposes of God, because He has a purpose for this nation, uh, and to show you just just as evidence that He does have a purpose for this nation, is I've never seen so many demon possessed people trying to destroy it in my life. Mm-hmm. So unless there's a purpose, why would they put this much effort into it, you know? Yeah. And so that, that kind of lets us see um, well, the whole what's going yeah, on. Absolutely. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, um, I'm going to read you a, a scripture first, and then I'm going to tell you what God was talking to me about so we can kind of uh, look at that. In Nehemiah, when they were, they were going back in and they were going to restore, um, there was a point where the workers complained that there was too much rubbish, and they just they just couldn't handle it, you know. Um, and when I looked up that word "rubbish" in the, you know, in the the meanings of what what that, if it was something different than what I would have thought, and it wasn't. It means ashes, dust, earth, ground, mortar, or powder. Um, and so, 
I was, this was as a result of something that God had spoke to me about because I thought, well, you know, I'm not exactly sure if this is um, physical rubble that God was talking to me about, but I really think it is. Um, and also during that time, Mike and Nehemiah, they had a lot of opposition. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, there were some people ticked off. The, the pagans didn't The did pagans not want didn't want it. it. And, I mean, they were, they had plans to fight them. And, and I think there was one place where they, they pretty much had to build and, and have swords. They had to, to maintain protection while they were trying to get yeah. everything restored. One guy was building. The other guy was protecting his hope, protecting his six, if you will, like we say mm-hmm. in the military. He was protecting his back while holding a sword. And so I'll come back to this in a minute, but I just I just wanted to say that's what that word rubbish means because I think I can apply it to something. Um, I I was hearing from God this weekend and going into the Day of Atonement, and and he he I'm going to tell you a couple of things he told me, and this is just where I wrote it down. He he said I have plans for my people that they are not aware of, plans that will once again bring my kingdom to the forefront of this nation. Long ago, I placed my desires in their hearts, but they could not fit those desires with what they saw with their eyes. Behold, a new beginning is before you, and my power is going to sweep this nation. Then he started talking to me about specific places. And, and so, you, you know, if he mentions a place, I start praying about it. And he talked to me about Hollywood. He said, I'm going to judge the wickedness. And he said, when the rubble is cleared, Mighty men and women will call this nation back to my ways and back to my word. So when I heard the rebel, um, I thought, well, that could be an earthquake, and that place couldn't exist anymore. It, it might be the rubble of the lives as God judges the wickedness. I think there's a good chance it may be taken down. Um, I'm talking physical rubble. That could be a lot of ways, I guess. God didn't show me anything or give me anything extra on that. Um, and I and I know that Hollywood has to be judged. Mm-hmm. I know it does because that is such a source of, of. They've used it to poison a nation. Well, and it is. That's powerful enough there. It's powerful enough in Hollywood that it's changed this nation. Yeah. It's presented a whole bunch of different lifestyles and a whole bunch bunch of ways of looking at things that are so. Um, Against God's ways. You know, and I, what's interesting, I've got a book on the early days of Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And as you know, they were trying to push the same stuff then. I mean, way back in, in the early 20th century, that they had to create something called censors to start saying, listen, the public isn't going to tolerate this stuff. And you're going to have to back it off. I mean, way back when in, in, in the black and white, mm-hmm. even when they were barely even talking movies, they were trying to get in stuff that we would see like an R-rated movie and all this stuff. And there was such an outcry of the public that they had to corral them way back then. So that was the original intent that they had. Well, and so, I mean, we, we can see easily. And the mind control out amongst those that are there, the uh, pedophilia, I mean, I, I think we haven't even seen anything yet. I think no, when haven't. God's done revealing this, I think everybody's going to be just, you know, with their mouths hanging open. And I remember years ago, God told me that when his judgment came, it would change the landscape. So I don't have any doubt that there will be places. Um, as a matter of fact, he told me there will be cities that fall, as he was talking to me this this last few days. Um, but, he, but there can be um, firm foundations established. And as a matter of fact, he said they'd become ports for my people to gather and be redeemed. When he said ports, I started thinking, okay, this these are probably coastal cities mm-hmm. because I don't know why he would have said ports. Well, you know, when you um, go back to the prophecies, Dietrich Dudeman, he talked about the West Coast, the East Coast, mm-hmm. and so we may begin seeing some of that come to pass. Well, and you know, there's a difference, Mike, and I think you're going to be touching on this too, Um you know, there's always this, uh, and I think Rabbi Khan touched on this in the Harbinger and different things. He talked about how they, in defiance, even read scriptures and, and talked about how they would rebuild. Yeah, reading the words of defiance uh-huh. out of the Word of God. And so, <laughs> you know, the the occult always have this this thing, and I think it's Manly P. Hall even mentions it. I was looking looking it up because I've heard you talk about this before, but it's they'll always say the occult, 
the phoenix is going to rise out of the ashes. Yeah. And that's an occult thing. And it's it's like, okay, if it's if something's burned down, guess what? It's gonna come back. And it's like it's like a defiance, like you can't stop it. You can't stop this occult power. It's gonna rise back up. But I'm telling you something, and you can you can take this to the bank. When God gets done with whatever's been built at the foundation, like I would not want to be in buildings that had a Masonic cornerstone. Just mm. give you a little hint there. Um, because when when God does something, you know they they He tells you to remove the rubble. You you take it out, take take all of that out. Don't build back on the same foundation. No. You know, re- remove the rubble. Whether it's it's it would be a, a place where there's a building, a city. Whether it's in us, Philosophies, like we talked concepts, about the the, the, old, the bad root systems. We yeah. talked about that in the podcast. Bad seeds, bad and, roots. And so you don't want to leave a tap root down there, a bottom of because then stuff springs back up out of it. That's why we're to get down to the very bottom of anything. Excuse me, that's been built. You know, by the enemy, yeah. however that is. Yeah. It's you remove it. It's and like you, let, you say, it's like you say in Missouri, you dig all the way down to you hit hard pan, you know, and where the roots can't grow. We have to have God establish our foundations. And if you're not on the firm foundation, then, the sh- you know, it's like sink, shift in sand, you're going to be unstable. And so I do think we're going to see s- cities that are not going to make it. I don't know the timing on that. I don't know, but but I think as God judges wickedness. Now this, and to not, you know, the last thing God told me is he, I was praying, he said, don't lose hope. He said, just put your trust in me. So it doesn't mean that God can't save his His people wherever they are. I mean, that's that's what God's getting ready to do is he's going he's gonna to show his power and it's going to be against wickedness and it's going to be to bring his people out yeah. and to do miracle miracle work and power. And so that's coming, but I I think that we're going to we're going to see some things. He he was having me pray for Portland. He said he has a remnant uh there that's praying, they're courageous, they'll stand for truth and righteousness. And so, you know, God may put certain cities on your heart to pray about. Um but I can tell you whatever is at the root of Hollywood, God's going to be dealing with. Oh, absolutely. And God help all the victims. Help yep. them, Father. And there uh, are many. Bring restoration to those their lives have been ruined. Bring restoration to this nation, Father, for everything that has been um, received from Hollywood. Uh, ungodly concepts, ungodly yes. lifestyles. Yes. Forgive those sins, Father, and, and bring restoration. Father, this nation can be used of you. And, Father, you've got a remnant here. You've got a remnant all over the world, and I know you're going to raise them up. For your purposes, yes, and um, so I'm going to let you talk about, and then. Well, I've, I've entitled uh, the podcast today "Rubbish from Rubbish to Restoration," and one of the first things came to mind in, in our discussion is, is Psalms eleven three: "If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do?" And we need to understand that you know what we see in Nehemiah when when Nebuchadnezzar came. What they would do, not only tearing down the walls, tearing down the the temple, but any landmarks that would remind the people of their history, their culture, or their spirituality were destroyed. That's that's all this rubbish that they would they would turn over every stone. They would break everything apart. You could, uh, and you know, Mary, in, in a certain way, we're seeing the Marxists in America doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. Tearing down the statues, and you know one of the things you know when I, and I mean some of some of them are, are to the place of stupidity, like tearing down. You know you claim Black Lives Matter, but you tear down a statue of Frederick Douglass, uh, who was who was a, an, an intellectual uh, from the black community. Uh, that I mean his writings inspired Martin Luther King and, and many others, and you tear down his statue because they're so ignorant of our past. And, and I even look at, um, the Confederate statues. They had some of, of, you know, General Lee and some of these other that were brilliant tacticians. And one of the things that I always looked at that personally, you know, it's like, you know, I, I've always wondered, you know, why we did, do we have statues of Confederate generals to include Albert Pike up there right in front of the Masonic Lodge in DC. Uh, but it also reminds us historically that men can be brilliant in one area 
and completely wrong in another. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter that he was a great military leader. He chose the wrong side. He, even though he was brilliant in this area, he was morally lacking in another. And it's to, it's to warn us that the same thing can still happen today that we can have somebody that may be brilliant in technology like we're seeing in, in the Silicon Valley. Uh, but some of the, some of the tactics we're seeing from Facebook, from Twitter, uh, from so many of these is they're morally deficient because they're, they're actually violating freedom of speech. And uh, they never, uh, they never raise anything. The left ever says it's always what conservatives say because there's censorship going on. You see that that's part of this tearing down and, uh, you know, going back to uh, Nehemiah 4.11, it says, in, uh, or 4.10, uh, then Judah said the strength of the laborers is failing. There is so much rubbish that we cannot, we're not able to build the wall. Now, we need to understand that this dismantling of, of removing the spiritual landmarks uh, and, and to destroying the walls of protection and destroying the temple of God, if you will, within America, talking about our faith, has been going on for about 200 years. That we, uh, in, the, uh, in the 19th century, we had spiritism, evolution, and eugenics. Uh, basically, there, there were mind viruses released uh, into the population. And Mary, you'd be surprised that uh, during the 19th century that you, you see uh, pastors holding seances in their churches. And and this whole I mean, there's this all kinds of crazy stuff that that built and and continued uh, into the 20th century. You see the infiltration of Masons and many others, uh, not only uh, in in um, uh, political things, but Mary the Church. How many pastors are Masons? How many how many of our seminary presidents or chancellors are 33rd degree Masons? And I, and I have seen this, uh, you know, I was raised uh, Southern Baptist until I was about, I want to say, 11, 12, then we became missionary Baptist, and, and then I got spirit-filled about 16 and got the left foot of fellowship uh, and was counted among the spirit-filled. But the Southern Baptists have been on a downward decline. We, we have seen that not only in numbers, uh, we have seen that with a, the Lifeway, their, their bookstores all went out of business. And just recently, uh, one of my favorite Bible softwares was Word Search Bible, which was Lifeway, which they just sold uh, to Logos. You know, eventually Logos may end up being the only software out there, but they do a wonderful job with what they do. Uh, it, it is a researcher's paradise. Uh, but I'm hearing from a lot of Southern Baptist pastors that are saying we can no longer carry credentials with the Southern Baptist Church because of many of the directions they're taking, and they're looking to move their credentials mm -hmm. uh, to to a, you know, a like minded group that's really wanting to, to follow God, and at the core of that, you'll find Freemasons or other agents of of the mystery religions, and it, and it extends well beyond Freemasonry, uh, Rosicrucianism, and and just all kinds of other things. The New Age has has infiltrated the church. And they have been for 200 years systematically destroying the spiritual landmarks of our faith in this country. Uh, you wouldn't know it, talking to the, even the average pastor, somebody that's been to seminary, that the original Christians that came over, the pilgrims and the others, when they came, they said that the law of Moses was going to be the law of the land. They were, they were keeping the feasts, and they were, keep, they were walking in the commandments of God. And what began to sway that is when you had this great influx of Freemasons coming in, they began building things and getting into politics, began to sway that. But that was the original foundation of, of believers that came over uh, in, into what was back called then the New World. And they have, they have uh, Mary, we have moved. I remember you know, not, Spurgeon not only has you know, the writings of his sermons, but he also has the lectures to his students. And, and how that he would talk that one day uh, the body of Christ would no longer tolerate a decent sermon of two hours. Mm. You know, right now, you know, I, uh, I, I used to teach 90 minutes at a time. Of course, I was 
you know, I kind of cut my teeth in the charismatic movement where you had this 90 minute cassette tape and I felt, Hey, you need to fill the whole thing up. Uh, but we've even waned from that. We have so many churches that their entire service is shorter than what the men of God used to teach out of the word. And, and, uh, the depth sometimes when I want real depth, uh, from the word of God, I will go back to, uh, commentaries and writings that are before the 20th century. Or right at the beginning of the 20th century. I, I love you know strong systematic theology, and there are systematic theologies that I really enjoy. Uh, as well as the writings, there was depth. Uh, they 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 were really dedicated. Andrew Murray, if you want to, you know, just abiding in Christ and fellowshipping with Christ and learning prayer, Bounds and 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 Murray are, are just wonderful, wonderful assets to be able to get hold of because there was depth there. Because they have been turning everything to rubble, instead of depth. We have these high-sounding theological sound bites, and in fact, the Word of God even talks about them. Uh, it talks about uh, in, in Jeremiah twelve and thirteen. This is what we have done. It says, "For my people have committed two evils; they have forsaken me, the the fountain of living water, and hewn themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water." And if if I had if I had a dollar for every time that I, I met, not not just with people in the pew, but people in the pulpit, and they give forth this high-sounding theological soundbite, and I say, okay, now stop, define what that means, and show me how it's built within the Word of God. They couldn't do it. They couldn't even share any depth. It, you know, it sounds good. It's very impressive, theologically inaccurate, or just half a truth. But they couldn't even explain it because they and the the reaction is they get mad if you challenge the theological soundbite because it was a cistern that couldn't hold water, mm. and so there's no living water in it. It makes you you have this facade of really thinking that you know the depths of God's word and you understand His ways, but really you have no idea at all because. The landmarks have been destroyed. You're playing with rubbish. You're playing with, with an illusion that has makes you think that you have something and you don't have something. And they, they have done that in every sector uh, of the body of Christ and in every movement. I remember in, in the Baptist movement, we would turn up our nose uh, at uh, anybody that was charismatic and the charismatics, and well, the Baptists only uh, bar- you know, barely have the gas in their tank. They don't have the power of the Holy Spirit. And then even with the Hebraic Roots movement, there, there's a mean side to it. Uh, I remember years ago, I went up to Kansas City for uh, a meeting, and it, it, it touched on our Hebraic heritage. And uh, people got mad at me because I was using Jesus instead of Yeshua. And I can use Yeshua all day long. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, but I'm, I'm teaching Gentiles trying to discover their Hebraic heritage. Mm-hmm. And I had this one woman get into an argument with me and, you know, saying the name of Jesus is nothing. And we, we could have a mean side of it. It's like, how could they do this? How could, well, you did it for years until God opened your eyes. And guys, we, we need to move in love and compassion. And anybody moving in the grace of God it's because of the goodness of God that you can lead them to the next level, not that you're looking down your nose at them, whether you're Baptist or Pentecostal. And see, the same spirit can go in any of these movements mm-hmm. because it, it's derived from the mystery religions, and we need to make sure that we don't do that. But we then you say, well, why, why is this so important to understand? In the, in the rubbish, because we go on in a, in a to, 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 where do I want to go? Back in Nehemiah 11, it says, uh, it says, Our adversaries have said, They will neither know nor see anything until we come into their midst and kill them and cause their work to cease. And so they would hide in the rubbish. The enemy would hide in the rubbish. That's why they, uh, and I, I think they actually turned it around and began hiding in the rubbish themselves to get the, the bad guys. I think they used it to get, uh, get an advantage. <laughs> but we, we need to understand that as, as God begins to restore things, that we, we have got to look at our attitudes to make sure they reflect the heart of Jesus. We've got to look at our, our philosophies to make sure they line up with the Word of God. We've got to look at all these things because the enemy 
is not going to allow us to begin rebuilding the walls, reestablishing the foundations, resetting back up the temple, metaphorically speaking, in our day, without a counterattack. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, guys, we, we've got to do this with, with humility. And, in fact, in Isaiah fifty eight twelve it says, And they shall be of thee, shall build the old waste places, Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairs of the breach and re- the restorer of paths to walk in. Now, Isaiah 58, this, this is an effect of what they're doing because God's people repented, fasted, mm-hmm. humbled themselves, and started coming back to God, Yeah, that's which right. is the task of the remnant in mm-hmm. this hour. It is. Is that we we have got we've got to fast we've I mean we've got to examine everything. Truth loves examination. Mm-hmm. Error screams and throws a hissy fit the moment that you begin examining yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. And so if what we believe or our attitudes don't hold up to scrutiny, we better seek the face of God. Mm-hmm. Because part of what's going to happen in the days ahead is as God begins to do these things, they're going to try to re-infiltrate, to sabotage, to plant seeds of corruption. And the reason that we need to fast and that we need to pray and really humble ourselves before God is we're going to, and, and you know, I kind of deal with this some in, in my book, in the priesthood, there's like this uh a crust around our spirit that's almost like the veil between the spirit and the the soul which you you see in the tabernacle you had the veil that Jesus you know that was rent when Jesus died which meant not only did we have access but it also showed a revealing of the circumcision of heart that would pierce through that crust so that we could begin perceiving spiritually again we we we've got to be able to do that in the days ahead we have got to be able to discern those of kindred spirit. It's so. It, it, in fact, we we need to return to what I what I call the the seven anointings of Messiah that's outlined in Isaiah eleven one through three. In fact, I got several chapters on it in my new book. You know, it talks about uh, in Isaiah eleven one, and there shall come forth a rod out from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom. The understand and the understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and his delight is in the fear of the Lord. You need to underline that. That that is the very nature of Messiah that he came to be an example. His his delight was to walk in the fear of God. <coughs> now, when you begin living a lifestyle of walking in the fear of God, that you become God conscious, that you become Holy Spirit conscious, you get to the place, because what's interesting here, it says, he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. He can see past all that, because there, there is a, and we, we have seen this, whether it's the Baptist Charismatic Hebraic Heritage Movement or any other movement, there is a lingo that goes on with that, you know. <laughs> yeah, there is. And, you know. <laughs> Uh, you know, and I remember in the old Pentecostal movement, not only was there a lingo, you know, the, you had to shake a certain way and do this, oh, glory to God, and, and all this. And what they found out is that were the guys coming uh, that were coming out of a drug program or whatever, they could learn the lingo but not have the lifestyle. And when they're at church, boy, they could shake it and bake it, but there was no substance there. Well, I think the enemies worked on making shallow Christianity. Oh, yeah. And I know I can say that because I used to have it. Me too. I mean, I just had such shallow Christianity and, and all the sermons I heard you preach and things like that. I mean, there were, I could hear the truth, but I had such a foul root system that nothing could take root. I mean, the nothing, no truth could take root because I had a bad root system. And so any truth that came in there, it was just, you know, stolen away and... um I'll never forget what it felt like when God delivered me, that initial deliverance where I could read the Word and 
it was it was just like I'd got saved. Yeah. And I know that I I know I I loved Jesus. I'd given my heart to Him when I was a kid, and that was there. But my spirit was so closed off. To where like usually you get saved and then the Holy Spirit starts working and then you get sanctified, you grow in the in the Word, you grow in God, and your soul works out the salvation. Well, I got stalled out, and I and I think that many people have. I had so much depression and so much junk going on that was bleeding over from the back that it was obvious to me something was wrong with me. But I think I think for a lot of the body of Christ, Mike, I don't even know that they understand that they don't have it because the the church system supports the shallowness we've all had. It it supports that. So everybody thinks I'm doing good. I'm in church. I'm singing. But, but when it comes to like hearing, hearing some rough stuff, because we're not only going to hear rough stuff as things are exposed, we're going to see rough stuff. And so for people that don't have, you know, I, I think I said that one time, it's rooted and grounded in faith, but it's rooted and grounded in love. Of course, you can. There's another scripture that talks about the faith being um, grounded. But Mike, if we don't have depth, if we don't have depth there, and and know that we have the the comfort of God, the power of God to take us through anything, that's when you're going to have people start shaking, and it's oh, yeah. it's going to be rough for them. And in fact, I think even in, in what's being taught in the pulpits, and and uh, you know, I love the comfort of God. Okay, God coming and rescuing us. I, I I love those messages, but when it when we stay on that, and never move from constantly needing to be rescued to becoming a fighting force for God, I, I think it it is indicative of the shallowness of what we're doing, and there there has to be this transition because with little kids. And have you ever had the, the little kid that if there was a way of getting hurt, they would they would find it and not only create new ways. And so you were constantly, it's like, you know, uh, Jesus grabbing Peter by the hair out, uh-huh. of, the, out of the Sea of Galilee. Uh, young believers are always that way. But as you mature, you transition that my lifestyle and the ways of God that have been so established in my life, and I've actually gotten militant about walking in the kingdom personally to the place that I can become a soldier used in the field rather than the person need to be rescued, which is a part of maturity. Now, yes, there will be times that, you know, God needs to rescue us. God needs to help us. Man, we always, as long as we're on this planet, we're going to need it. But it's, it's, uh, there's almost the 80, 20 principle comes in, you know, you have people that need to be rescued 80% of the time. And then you have the soldiers that need to be rescued 20% of the time. And then the, the, there's a transition, okay, learn the ways of God. You don't need to be rescued so much. You're walking in his presence. You know the depth of his fellowship. And now you become a force to be reckoned with that like Jesus, you know, the book of Acts says he went about doing good, walking in righteousness, doing the will of God, and destroying the works of the enemy. And so now, instead of being having to be rescued by the devil's wrecking ball, we become God's wrecking ball that begins taking the landmarks and the walls of protection the enemy has built around his own fort, fortresses, mm-hmm. strongholds, and we become used of God to tearing them out and turning them into rubbish so they can be cleared away out of our culture. Mm. And I, I think that's that's a great part of what God is is getting ready to call the remnant to do, mm-hmm. and that's why we've we've got to question everything from our attitudes to our theological sound bites to make sure that it that is drawn from the depth of the Word of God and takes the full counsel of the Word. And if if that theological concept cannot flow from Genesis to Revelation, then you're dealing with a partial truth. I mean, the, the principle of first mention, there's so many hermeneutical principles that we need to apply that have been abandoned by the church because it, it's not uh, friendly to theological sound bites. Well, I think as, as God raises up his people um, with the reality of what's around us, yet the faithfulness of God, um, then you're going to see, see the people. It's kind of what God told me a long time ago. He said, you know, because I kept thinking, God, how in the world would you ever know who, considering the mind control and the program multiples and all of them in the church, I said, how in the world would you ever know who you could trust, who you could, you know, 
um, because it, we've we've been doing this for a long time, and it takes a long time for the yeah. back to show up. And you you can't do it by the seeing of the eye or the no, hearing because, of the ear. No, because because be spiritually, and you perceived. may you may sense there's something wrong, but it takes a while for the demonic to show up. Yeah. Now, eventually, it, there in the anointing, there in the anointing, it shows up. But I mean, it takes takes a while. And so I remember he told me he said uh, he said watch and when the dust clears, he said yeah. see who's standing. And I thought, this means a whole bunch of people are getting ready to go, Mike. Yeah. There, there will be the saboteurs. There will be some of these saboteurs that God is going to take. You know, I, I remember back, and then this was before uh, Mary Ann Brown passed away, and she was a mighty woman of God. In fact, uh, before she got spirit-filled, she actually held the highest position a woman could hold in the missionary, Bab- uh, not missionary, but Southern Baptist Convention. Then she got spirit-filled and, uh, had to move out of that, but I mean, she was she was so prophetic. Yes, she was. And uh, boy, you could. I remember one time we were uh, down in in Arkansas at, at a meeting, and she turned to us to give her prophetic word, and you could almost see the fire the fire of God. You in could. Her eyes. Yeah, that's the first time I'd ever seen that in somebody's eyes. And it, it was like her yeah. whole countenance changed mm-hmm. because it's it's just so such a strong prophetic gift. And uh, she told me before she passed away, she says. What God's getting ready to do in the church, she said, the church will not even resemble Mm-mm. what we know as the church that in America. That's true. That's true. And I've always took that to, to mean that we're going to return to the book of Acts type of church, which is going to take a lot of transformation. It's going to take a lot of work. Uh, and what, one of the things that has always uh, impressed me about the, the church in the book of Acts, and it wasn't even the miracles, Mary, they thrived under persecution. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I believe that that's exactly what's going to happen. I think that's part of the testimony we're going to see. We're going to have, as as God does this thing he's getting ready to do, that we've not ever seen before, this this new beginning he talks about, um, it's, it's because we've not seen this level of his power nor the level of the gifts that are going to operate. And so it's not going to look like anything old. It's going to look like a brand new thing. And it's you have to have discernment because we've got to part of what we're getting ready to see is the enemy, enemy destroying things. Part of what we're getting ready to see is the judgment of God. God destroying things. So yeah. so it's important, I believe, that we're able to discern. You know, and I, I think it may be more apparent than what we think yeah. because I think God's getting ready to do some things, and everybody's going to sit back and say. Well, there's nobody could have done that but Almighty God. And I think we're going to see the frustration of the enemy of things they can't destroy because mm-hmm. God's hands on it. That's right. And uh, so, yeah. But but I I really do think that we have you know we've got so many Masonic foundations, and you know as well as I do, God's not going to build on anything like that. No. That's why even in our lives, anything that's in there, if we are Freemason descendants, if we are you know witchcraft descent whatever that is that's got that foundation's got to be tore up it does and and get all the rubble out of there <laughs> get, all the junk so get that back we, to the word of god and we also yeah. need to you know and with uh, the fundamentals all right tory put together years ago they weren't they weren't uh, i'm into textual criticism but not higher textual criticism because then it begins treating the word of god as if it was the works of plato or whatever and uh, even sometimes with, uh, you know, I've got a lot of commentaries and stuff. They get so technically involved in the, the minutia of the Greek or Hebrew, or whatever, that they literally miss the point spiritually of what God was trying to say with the scripture. And so we, I know there's, there's a lot of that that needs to be judged. You know, we, we need to have the depth, mm-hmm. but it has to be in the fear of the Lord. Everything, if it, if it does not begin and end in the fear of the Lord, We've got to question it, mm-hmm. and uh, in, in in fact, with you know, with the new building and the different things that you know God has been trying to show us with that, there is a reverential fear uh, that I have about it because it's like, okay, God, um, you knew I really didn't kind of want to do this to begin with because I was I was kind of satisfied with what we have here. At the same time, I want it to be what you want it to be, not from expectations of others, not even from my own expectations. I want to set all that aside because you're getting ready to do something new. And the last thing I want to do is to be a hindrance to what you want. No, that's me too. And, that's and so it's, it, you and I are just kind of doing step by step, swallowing hard, making sure that, okay, we're hearing from God. Mm-hmm. 
It, it, and because, you know, I, I, I see it uh, not, as a, not as a church or synagogue or whatever else. It, it, this is going to be a – God keeps on telling me it is a strategic remnant learning center. Well, and and that, so it's going, to be compl- it's going to be about training leaders. I think the reason that we had such hesitancy – is because of the last 26 years. Yep. You know, if we sit down and just had the time to tell folks what we went through during this and dealing with program multiples and dealing with the occult coming after us and all this, it, it's very difficult to even think about going forward in anything associated with that yeah. because you just think, God, we're older. We can't be doing this level of stuff forever. And I'm not talking spiritual warfare because that, that doesn't seem like work to me. I, it just doesn't. I mean, it's just part of my prayer time. That's not work. But, you know, like it, it would not be, it's not uncommon. I'll just give you one example. And this is from nobody I'm dealing with right now, people years ago. It was not uncommon for somebody to, this is before I had enough sense to not just give out my phone. <laughs> um, it was not uncommon for somebody to call me, talk for two hours, hang up. Maybe an hour later, I get a call another two hours. Because once you start dealing with, if you pray for somebody that's a program multiple, this isn't just, oh, yeah, I'm going to pray for you and everything's going to be okay. It just, everything just like flies to pieces almost because to get healed, all the junk has to come to the surface. And so I started thinking, you know, when I started thinking about, about like going forward, that that hesitancy was there because I thought, God, I can't do, I can't keep doing this, I can't do this on this level, and and I've never felt like God had instructed us to do anything about training people how to deal with program multiple. There's a whole bunch of people that do out there, and uh, you know, I'll I'll refer people to these pr- people's prayers. The only thing trouble I have with this one group that I refer people to, and I'll tell people that their prayers are excellent, except they ask God to bind, they ask God and. That's our job. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, our job. Not that God a, can't bind anything, but if you don't learn your authority and you don't take authority, and, and, you know, the main thing I tried to do with anybody that was coming, and this is me trying to get healed, you know, and they came to me. I didn't go looking for anybody. They landed on our doorstep. And the main thing I wanted to do, first of all, is to make sure I wouldn't do anything wrong, covered myself since I'm, you know, had this stuff happen to me. But, I knew if I couldn't teach them to take their authority and learn to bind, learn to loose, all you're going to be doing is sitting there over and over Just and spinning over, your wheels. spinning your wheels. Yeah. And so that that was my main uh, motive in trying to help somebody is if you know it's like if you teach you, you take a person fishing and teach them to fish, then they they forever can can Eat. have food. Yeah. You know, and so that was that was kind of, and so that was in my mind of, you know, when I first had God had me keep looking at that building, and I thought, God, you know, we can't go, we we can't deal with all this the rest of our life. I don't have time. I don't have, I can't do that anymore. I can't spend that much time on the phone anymore. anymore. No. Well, and I don't, en- I I really don't enjoy. I never have liked talking on a phone. I am not a phone person, and I don't like it. Um, so I've had to. I've had to do things differently because, you know, I, and, I, and we both have done this. You know, we're, we're practical people, and we look at things and think we're not that young anymore. We aren't completely healed from all the things of the past, and uh, I'm talking physical things because I know the reason I have type 2 diabetes is the years that I spent in this staying awake, watching kids, what, trying to keep an eye on things so that to make sure little babies were going to be okay. And so I didn't, I didn't sleep very much. And so if you ever want to, you know, mess your body up on top of me eating wrong and all, and back when we weren't even eating clean then. So we're still trying to come back from that. And so, so for somebody, so for our partners to understand where I'm at in this, I don't want you to feel like that we are hesitant at all to do what God says <laughs> It's making sure it's what God says. Because because God's not going to put us in a situation yeah. that's going to destroy us. And we've had to watch that and make sure we're listening to God and not listening to people because people will kill you, not because they want to. There's such a need out there. There's so many people in trouble. They will. I, I have walked into rooms in the past now. This is nothing recent. So because if anybody's listening, they're going to think she's talking about me. No, I'm not. I'm talking about in the past. And I in that room, there were so many people that were programmed multiples i felt like the life got sucked out of me and i and part of the reason is because i wasn't putting up guards i didn't know they were programmed multiples 
But I would walk, I'd walk in there and I'd think, what is wrong? And so it took a while for God to show me what was going on. These people can destroy you if you don't guard yourself. I'm not putting them down. I'm not being critical. I've, I feel so horrible because they've had the, these things happen to them. I know what that's like. But I also know that God's going to have to raise up people with anointing to deal with that. Yeah. And that's not what we're called to do. No. We're not called to do that. We're, I we're, I gave my testimony of how God brought me out. That may not be the way that other people are going to go out. They may have to have counselors, and I am all for godly counsel and things like that. But we can't go that direction. No, our because calling. that's not what God's telling us you know, to do. God, in fact, right before I wrote uh, the Shine Our Directive, God literally, I'm preaching in the pulpit. The anointing comes on me. Okay, from this day forward, I'm only dealing with a remnant, and that's 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 my anointing. That's my calling, and. We're, we're, guys, where we're headed, I'm going to take everything that I have learned in almost 40 years of doing seminary work and take it outside the seminary. My vision that I need you guys to pray about in this, I mean, guys, when you when you donate to the, the ministry, this is where this is going. I want to take everything that I learned, produce that level of, of teaching that's available to the body of Christ that's it. for free. That's it. Uh, in in fact, when we when we when when the new place is done, uh, we get the uh, we get it open. We're going to have weekend seminars. I, you know, I've been uh, the last five or six years. I've been uh, doing conferences. I think with some wonderful men of God. Each one has their own area of expertise uh, that we're going to bring in. Mm-hmm. And what I'm believing God for is, you know, once the building's done, because we're 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 not going to go in debt for anything. So that when they come in, the conference is paid for before we ever set up the first chair, okay, is, is my vision. Yeah, that's what I'm believing So that for. the conference is free. It's free. Uh, I'm also going to, we're going to have this thing set up to record for TV so that we can post the videos on YouTube, Vimeo, mm-hmm. or whatever platform that is available to us because you don't know what uh, the tech world is going to do in trying to suppress the truth of the gospel. We're going to post it free uh, both in audio and in and video, as well as I'm going to get the notes from from all the speakers, and we're going to put together uh, syllabi that we can post in PDF free that people can download, so that you could go in depth. Like the, the very first one that uh, that I think that we're going to do, and I'm still praying about this, but the direction I'm getting is how to develop end time leadership, whether it's in the home, home fellowships, local assemblies. Uh, that the that the leadership tactics are going to have to change because even even that has been contaminated by the new age, uh, the mega church movement, so many different things mm-hmm. that the the approach is going to be have to be completely different. And and I've already been talking about several speakers to bring them in to say, hey, uh, I'm not going to give you uh, just one hour. We're going to be teaching for two or three days to where you're going to have two or three or four sessions. Everybody, you start out in the kiddie pool, but you end up in the deep end of the ocean when you get done with this thing. So there's real depth to it, so that people walk away saying, "Okay, I now have some tools. Tools, there you go. That I can <laughs> use in my home fellowship, in my home, uh, in my church, or even in my denomination, our, our church group that we have. That we can begin implementing them to bring the power of God, the purpose of God, and the and the direction of God into what we're doing. Well, and I." You know, as far as my part is, number one, I'm going to be supporting you. That's that's an obvious. When we're married, I'm your helpmate, and that's what I'm going to do. Um, but on a personal level, I, I, I know that God can use me to give me a prophetic insight to say a prayer over somebody to help them. Yeah. And I, I, I plan on being fasted up and ready before those conferences that anything God tells me to do, I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm, I don't have any problem praying for somebody, doing deliverance for somebody, helping them during that time. The reason we're going to have to have conferences instead of every week, like most churches, is because when you go under that level of, of helping people like that, you got to get go from, I've been with God, I'm given out, i got to go back and get with God. I can't, I can't be the counselor. I can't be the one that takes them step by step. And so, so that's what I think my part is. On top of just, I think I have an anointing to feed people and pat their heads. <laughs> that's what I like to do. Yeah, that's what that's what I just feel like the anointing flows strong in me 
to give prophetic words for encouragement and to just tell people it's going to be okay. Tell them what, what I see that God has placed in them. Feed them some good food, clean food, wonderful smelling food to where when they leave, they've been ministered to. You're going to be teaching. The people you're bringing in are going to be teaching. We're going to have praise and worship. And and that's, see, I can go with this. Yeah. I can so go with this. It's the first time I've ever been able to just grab it because the thought of me sitting, I can't be on the phone. What If you had 10 program multiples, and you were counseling them, I can't even imagine the hours of phone time you'd have. Eight to ten hours a day, seven days a week. You know, and so this is, this is, I'm not a counselor, but I can be used by God to pray, to give a specific laser-guided prophetic word that destroys yeah. something the enemy's built for years. I know God can do and that. And if you don't have time in, in your prayer closet, you can't have the prophetic. That's it. And yeah. so I have to make those times. That's why we're remodeling yeah. what used to be a back porch, Mike has turned it into, I mean, it's going to be a wonderful place for me to have. It's a prayer porch now. Totally get away from electronics. Have that place to pray. Plus, it's going to be big enough, you know, for the family and stuff. So I figure my, if we're going to be around long enough for my grandkids to have kids, we got to have a lot of tables. <laughs> and, and, you so, know, and even the same with me. Um, and, guys, you know, I always love hearing from folks. Uh, but on any given month, I have at least 40 things that, that are that are emailed to me that I either need to watch or I need to teach on. Well, all that's humanly impossible. And you know, some of the, some of the stuff's good. It's they have uh, excellent things. And, you know, that some of the stuff I w- but at the same time, I've got to concentrate on the massive amount of research that I need to do on what God is directing for the next book or for the next seminar or for the yeah. next whatever. And uh, it takes it takes solitude. Whether you're praying or you're researching, it takes solitude to be able to do some of these things. And uh, otherwise, because I don't want to give out a half, you know, a half baked idea or a half researched concept. Uh, I, I want to be able to dig to make sure that I cover all my bases and I get everything said that God once brought out. Uh, because I, that I, I'm not an inspirational teacher, and although there there are times that I, that I preach that this inspirational, but there that I like to I like to get out the backhoe and dig deep until I hit all go all the way down to the hard pan, you know, to to get out the deep things of God and then make it practical, and just this like with you in prayer with that that prophetic word that you know people may say, wow, she you know she moved in that t- ten minutes. She I mean she she there was a breakthrough anointing and all that. They may not realize it took 10, 15, 20 hours in prayer to get to the place where you can move yeah, at that level. It. Uh, many times it may take 10, 15, 20 hours of research and prayer to dig out mm-hmm. the nuggets of truth as well as to digest them and to really get a sense of what God is wanting to say in that. And Because there's a lot of times God has actually had to tweak my own paradigm or my own philosophy saying, you know, Mike, you're about 80% on, but this 20% you're drawing back from your past, uh, the things that you have been taught that weren't quite right, Mm -hmm. go back. And so, you know, God's realigning me to prepare me so that I can, so that I can actually give uh, a a pure word in that moment. And those, those, those times are just as crucial as the time of ministry at the altar in the pulpit. Well, yeah. And, I mean, who wants to get up there and, and be ineffective for God? That's the last thing I want to do. Absolutely. Is, is I want to see God's power shown. I don't want to be a deterrent of that. My no. word, I'd rather sit back and no, never go anywhere. Um, and so we, we have to have that prayer time. But but just just know this, guys. There's God has is, is got us on a trajectory. Yeah. And and that we, we didn't are, even fully comprehend when he had us by the building. No, I mean, we are no, we really didn't. Um, it was just out of obedience because I think our heads were thinking, "Oh dear God, I don't think we can go the way." But I, I once we saw, once God said, "This is what you're supposed to be," I thought, "Oh, I can go with that." And it's like the the puzzle began to click. I in can place go for us. with that. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And and so we're excited about what God's doing. We pray that that you are going to have a wonderful Feast of Tabernacles. You know, a lot of people are, are fasting now till the election. Well, we we chose the fast, uh, the, you Teshuvah, know. yeah. And so it actually says to celebrate during the Feast of Tabernacles. And so we're not going to fast you, during you that time. you can't fast during Tabernacles because it's forbidden. And so so anyway, but we're going to have the, all the every other area covered, and we are believing that God is going to do 
amazing things. I think I think there's going to be things exposed like nothing we've ever seen, and just just trust the Lord. Yeah. Trust the Lord. He's got you in a specific place. He's got you in a you know everything. God orchestrates everything, and so I am I'm just totally convinced that we are going to see some of the most amazing things we've ever seen, and we're going forward. I don't believe that this nation is going to be destroyed. I believe that God is going to shake it and rock and roll it. And, and then when, when we're done, when God's done, we're going to see something that God can use. Because right now, what's, what's happened over these last decades is just that it's, it's what God told me was called uh, Satan's reign, R-E-I-G-N. That just, I mean, he's just reigning and ruling because we've we've pushed God out, and there's no vacuum like you've always said. So the old enemy comes in and says, "Well, I'll, I'm going to take over this nation. I'm going to go to the highest levels. I'm going to." Well, God's in the process of turning that around, he is. and so praise God for that. That's what I've been praying for for years. I've just not known how in the world God can keep us knit together when we go through this shaking. But our God is great enough. Oh, he is. I mean, he had planned this from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. And, and he's raised people up all over the place that are praying, declaring his word. And he brought, you know, the, one of the one of the, the, the um, scriptures that always comes back to my mind was, you know, Esther, that, you know, uh, perhaps you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Uh, God is in control of all time and space. He brought us into this season because there are deposits of the kingdom within us that maybe we don't even realize. Well, I believe that's what he was telling me about in that word. Yeah. You know, that, that desires he's putting people, but they they can't put it into what they see with their eyes. It's like, well, I've got this desire to do this, God, but there's not a place. It doesn't even fit. It doesn't. But God's getting ready to make a place. He's getting ready to redo things that we've thought, okay, these are set in place. This is what the church says. This is what the church does. No, it's yeah. going to be what God says. <laughs> God's getting ready to break out the box the mm-hmm. devil has put the church in. That's right. And we're going to be that assembly that has been called out of Babylon. And that have assembled together in the kingdom of God, they're going to serve Jesus Mm -hmm. and Jesus alone to accomplish his word and his purposes in the earth. And Father, I just ask for each one of us, Father, during these fall feast time, Father, that you would just put a finisher's fire on the inside of us. That your word says that he who has begun this good work in you is able to complete it. And Father, I declare your word is true, your kingdom is true, and the voices of the enemy, Father, we bind up, we command them to be silent because you're going to finish the work in every remnant member's heart. And Father, we long to see what you're going to do in the days ahead at a people that have completely surrendered and bowed before the throne of King Jesus, and they're going to serve him with all their hearts. And Father, we just thank you, and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. In the Shinar Directive, we journey down the Luciferian rabbit hole to discover the matrix of darkness that has engulfed our planet. In the Shirith Imperative, we dug deeper to unearth the power source of hell itself and how the body of Christ can labor to impede its functioning in the earth and lay the groundwork for revival. Now it is time to unveil the mysteries of both the priesthood of the kingdom of God and the priesthood of darkness. Until these mysteries are understood, God's remnant cannot realize their purpose or be released with heaven's power to overcome the agenda of the denizens of the second heaven. The Kingdom Priesthood is a training manual for the remnant to discover their priesthood, their purpose, and their service to Almighty God. In the pages of this remnant manual, you will discover what Adam experienced in the first few moments of life and how those desires were written into the DNA of humanity revelations of what the Almighty meant when he told Adam and Eve to replenish the earth. Who were the first priests of the kingdom of God in the Bible, and who was the first priest of darkness? What was the knowledge of the tree of good and evil offering the first family of humanity? How we all share the same calling as Abel. The reality of the principalities' wars and how it is influencing the world today. As believers, how we are to function as both a priest and a tabernacle. 
The real purpose of the fire of God. How to carry the name of God in the earth with dignity and power. How the priesthood is essential for the releasing of end time warriors in the last days. How to flow in the sevenfold anointing of the Holy Spirit to represent Messiah. The kingdom priesthood is a call for the remnant to receive the fire of God and become the assembly that the gates of hell cannot overcome. Get your copy today at Amazon.com or KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. That's KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. Power up, power up.